I like how it's like the allegory of the cave by Plato. You know, this is such an ancient philosophical idea. And it's been treated in other films, and well at that. But I understand that this was also an allegory for a much more recent metaphysical philosophical idea that we are all like Cobb. That we all have this guilt that keeps us from the real existence. You know, keeps us locked in the illusion. And that I have not seen to treat in a film before, much less a mainstream one. Well, between this and Shutter Island, DiCaprio's kind of two for two on the whole wife's dead because he wasn't fast enough to save her kind of thing. Dude, in the future, follow your instincts. At least the kids weren't dead this time. Or were they? No, no, I guess they weren't. Okay, be perfectly honest, am I the only one who half sort of hoped, expected the dying father's words to be repeated as I'm losing my voice and it hurts to talk. But I just want to say one thing. You never do anything right. And then they're at the end of the film where he unlocks the vault that has his father. I almost expected the lines to go disappointed. Yes, I know, you're disappointed I didn't grow up to be like you. No, I'm disappointed you didn't get my nose. I mean, this thing is a contender. Apparently some people are debating whether or not it was limbo or there was a fourth level to the dream. You know, when Cobb goes there, finds Maul. Great job on that name, by the way. I love how they chose the French and Spanish word for bad or evil. Did kind of get the vibe that there was something a little off about that name, if nowhere near as much as with the name Ariadne, which I understand is from this myth where she was the mistress of May's building, and the film is allegorical for the myth. I do think it might have been good if they had made up some nickname so that Ariadne was only said once. Anyway, where they find Maul and where Killian Murphy goes. I would definitely say that that's Limbo because once Killian dies, because that lines up perfectly with the defibrillator one level up in the levels of dreams, he came back to life in that one. With how rare three layers of dreams were, I doubt they'd go for a fourth. I've heard some complaints that the whole tapping into people's dreams is, you know, either just the military or the illegal uses for it. I disagree. We don't hear about any legal uses, as far as I recall, but that doesn't mean there aren't any. Leo says that after that, meaning after he became wanted by the police, there didn't seem to be any other use for it. Presumably, the legal uses would require some paperwork, maybe he'd have to be registered or something, and the police would discover him. You know, the same way payback starts with Mel Gibson not in a hospital, because the police are after him. If he went to a hospital, the police would be notified. I didn't personally miss explanations of the technology, but I will admit that we didn't get them. And I suppose I wouldn't mind finding out more about this universe the technology and the cases and such. Actually, and I hope I can maybe incept this into someone, although since I don't have the tech, I guess it would have to be an immaculate inception, but I could actually see a pretty cool game come out of this concept. Maybe like an MMORPG? You know, various teams, a handful of players per team, they decide how many layers to the dream, there could be various obstacles. I don't know, I could kind of see it being cool. I liked how this worked in stuff that we experience in dreams. You know, how if you die in a dream, you wake up, or if you feel like you're falling, you'll wake up. Music becomes a part of the dream. I mean, who hasn't had their alarm clock or the phone ringing or something become part of their dream instead of immediately waking up? I've also heard others say that they don't buy the whole thing of, you know, dream within a dream. I would say, I think I personally have experienced that. I mean, you dream, but you can sort of tell it's a dream, and then you feel like you woke up, and then when you actually wake up, you realize, I didn't actually wake up there. I don't know. Maybe it doesn't happen to everyone. I'd also like to tackle my thoughts on why this doesn't really have any nightmares, and why this isn't as colorful or surreal as The Science of Sleep, Mulholland Drive, and Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. 
I mean, I love those three movies. With Mulholland Drive and Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind tied for a first place in that ranking. This was not meant to be so clearly subconscious. I mean, if you stop to think about it, all of the dreams could essentially, at first glance, I mean, if you just saw a clip of that scene and nothing particularly weird was going on, you wouldn't necessarily jump to the conclusion that it was a dream. Except for maybe the snowy one and the limbo. And to me, that's a big part of the point with this. It's kind of the same with The Matrix and The Thirteenth Floor. We're not supposed to... Oh, that is clearly not real. Because then the allegory of the cave doesn't really work. I mean, some are pointing out that the totem would only prove that you weren't in someone else's dream. Because in your own dream, you also know in your subconscious how much the totem would weigh and what it would feel like. And if you spend enough time in that dream, as with Maul in Limbo, I gotta say, when the movie ended, I was kinda hoping he wouldn't have the kids turn around, but then when they did, it panned back, showed us the spinning top, and then he did something absolutely brilliant. We don't see it stop, but we do see what could be it starting to give up and fall, thus feeding both sides of the argument was that a dream too, or was that finally reality? And thus making us think about the allegory of the cave. Is what we perceive to be real, actual reality? You know, it's kind of the basic instinct ending where you think she's gonna stab him, and then it was just, you know, a hug kind of thing. And then the camera pans down, and we see the ice pick. I also really liked how it treated the idea of choosing between living your own life, imperfect but real, or a fantasy life where you are God, but where nothing you do there will ever be real. Because ultimately, that's a choice we all have to make. And the line about how he, with his memories, with his imagination, could never recreate her including all of her imperfections, that was beautiful. I mean, I'm not gonna get all mushy on you in this video, but I will say, with love, the imperfections are a huge part of it. You know, the tiny little things that they do different from everybody else. I'm with Joseph Gordon-Levitt. I would have stolen a kiss from Ellen Page, too. She can enter my dreams anytime. Well, she's already there, but hey, there'd be two of her, and I could live with that. I like that he accepts that she's dead, and then tries to move on with his life. You know, forgives himself for her inception. I do think the ending can be interpreted to be that he himself has now been incepted with that idea. And for the rest of his life, he won't completely believe that the real world is real. And maybe it isn't. A kind of poetic justice, if you will getting hit by the same idea that killed his wife unintentionally. I mean, the look on his face when she says, so what's the real world like? Are you being chased? That was really good. The whole film is just so well structured. There's set up and then there's payoff. I mean, the concept that an idea can really take root and just stay with you forever is really like one of the first lines spoken in the film as is the comment that doesn't seem to go anywhere in that particular scene about we can train you to people going into your mind and then when they go into Killian Murphy's mind he's already been trained and the bit about how each layer the amount of time is different you know there's this exponential growth I think and again you know they don't spend 10 years on the mission but when it turns out that they have to kick out of the first layer within X amount of time, we can then find out that they have this much more time in the third layer. Did anybody else think that death by train is a bit brutal? I quite like the bit where, I think it's Joseph, is shooting at these couple of guys 